So what we're doing is testing the Tiny Hawk with the old antenna before I put the new circular polarized antenna on. And what I'm going to be doing is recording any interference in the video with the goggles right here while I walk the Tiny Hawk around the basement keeping it at a forward angle and using the same path every time. So that's why I'm not going to fly it because I want to make sure the paths are identical. Actually going to be using two frequencies just to be fair. I'm going to be using the 5800 Fat Shark frequency and then I'm going to use the Race Band 5769 frequency and see if either of those affect the interference as well. Alright, let's get started. So the Fat Shark frequency is on the left and the Race Band is on the right and I'm just walking it around the basement receiving it with my True D diversity receiver on my goggles. Now I found out that the firmware on it didn't actually support race bands, so it's actually receiving at 5800 on both of them. So it's not the best test in the world, but it does give you an idea how the stock antenna performs as I go around all these obstacles in the basement. I'm hoping for better results when I use the micro CP antenna. I'm going to be installing this Micro AX2 5.8 circular polarized antenna. Happens to be reverse circular polarized, but it also comes in a black version that's right hand circular polarized. So that's the one I'm going to be installing. Now you notice the connector on this will not just clip on to the original video transmitter that came with the Tiny Hawk because their antenna is soldered on. So in order to install this on the original board, you'd have to cut this cable, strip it, and then solder it on here. But I'm not going to be doing that because I've got the VTX-03S from Eachine. This is the box that it came in. And I'm going to be connecting to that because that's what's in the Tiny Hawk right now. And you can look at my previous video if you want to see how I installed this VTX into the Tiny Hawk. But I'm going to be putting the antenna on that and you can see that the antenna has the right connector to just clip right on there. So that's what I'm going to be doing. So right now I'm just taking off the four screws on the Tiny Hawk and uh, that's pretty easy. You just unscrew these four corners and take the screws off and then you can lift this little plate off the bottom revealing the board. And then we can lift the board up to get underneath. And there's some grommets here on the ends and on the sides that we have to loosen up to get the board off. Oh, and also we need to disconnect the wires from the motors on the four corners. I think tweezers like this make it easy to pull the motor mounts out because you can kind of get on either side of the flange and then just slowly move it and get it out like that. I have removed the flight controller board with the VTX-03 video transmitter mounted on it. There's the camera. And one thing we have to do to prepare for installing the antenna, of course, is remove the old one. And I can cut this heat shrink that's on there and just remove the antenna. Next, we need to place this antenna through the hole where we want it to go. Because if we try to do it afterward, it'll be impossible to get it through without cutting the case. So we want to put it through this hole here first before we attach it to the board. Okay, I removed the heat shrink right here. Just cut that and pulled it off and then the antenna was sitting like this and I just used my fingernails to pry it off very carefully. So we got the heat shrink and the antenna off. Now we'll put on the new antenna by pushing it back on to the socket. Okay, so I just brace the tab right here with my fingernail and then just push the antenna on there and it just snapped right on. You can see where it's just snapped right onto the socket and then I rotated it around very carefully so it wouldn't come off. Now I've got to put a little piece of heat shrink over the whole thing like this. Just pushing it on there like that. And then I'll heat that on there probably just use a soldering iron on low temperature to heat it. I don't think I can use a hot gun or it'll melt everything else on there. So I'll get that on there and then I'll just cut the end off it. And that'll 
help keep the antenna from lifting or unplugging right there okay so now we want to get the camera back into the hole right here and the wires at the top of the camera have to go towards the top of the frame otherwise the picture would be upside down I actually use the end of my barbecue skewer to pry it in put this bottom piece in first right here and then use the other one in the hole of the top tab and just, just kind of pried it till it went in the hole so it's in there now next is to hook up the motor wires and I'll just use the uh, pair of tweezers to do that again probably have to do that off camera because it's kind of fidgety I'm always afraid that when I do this I'm gonna break the wires off it's really really difficult to get it in there there's hardly any room all right before I put on the last motor connector I need to get this little antenna through the hole I made in the side this is the uh, receiver antenna not the video but the receiver antenna and I've drilled a tiny hole in the frame and I gotta get that back through the hole there we go so there's the antenna wire I had to fish that through the receiver antenna wire before I put on the last motor connector I'm working on the last motor connector now that's probably the easiest way if you can get your hands in there all right so that's in now I've got to make sure all these little grommets are on and then get it back on the pegs I'm just getting the screws back in putting the second screw in right there all right we'll finish up the other two and then we'll go ahead and test it whole thing's powered up and uh, I don't know if you can see in the goggles but it's working right there so I'm recording this sequence in the goggles so you can see what's actually coming through the camera and I'll put that in the video and uh, so everything looks like it's working the picture is right side up that's good and the only thing I don't know is if the uh, motor spin so let's just give that a try one minute motor is armed so there's the motors they're all spinning looks good and looks like it flies let's go ahead and test this reversed circular polarized antenna I'm going to walk the quad around the basement like I did before following the same path and I've got two reverse circular polarized receiver antennas here a patch and a mushroom so we got that set up now let's start the goggles recording and we'll go ahead and do it so the stock antenna is on the left and the newly installed micro CP antenna is on the right really I was hoping for better results than this I think the original stock antenna actually looks better than the CP antenna in these circumstances I don't know how it'll work later on when I get it into the gym but I'm running this right now on the Fat Shark band which was the best band the 5800 megahertz band so that's what I got it on right now now I decided to switch receivers from my true diversity to a Fat Shark receiver so that one's on the right and you can see now how those two compare so I thought maybe the receiver was causing the problem but I don't think so it looks like it performs the same way no matter what receiver I use I do have only the patch on the Fat Shark because it's not diversity but the patch was the only one operating anyway even with diversity so that's the results I wish it could have been better but that's just the way it is I also tried it with a helical antenna which you can see here mounted on my goggles and I think it worked a little better than the patch antenna but still I don't believe it's as good as the original combo which just had the stock antenna and the patch on my goggles so I don't know what to say I think maybe the real problem is the original Tiny Hawk running off a one cell battery just doesn't produce as good results as maybe a two cell battery would but there is the results so in closing I think I'm just gonna go ahead and leave the CP antenna on there 
I could always put the stock antenna back on later if I want to. But I think what I'm going to do is fly it in the gym this winter and see how it does compared to the performance last year with the stock antenna. And then I can show you comparison on that later. Of course, that's probably going to be maybe a couple months from now when I get around to the winter games at the gym. But for now, that's what I have. And I'm just going to leave it like it is for now. So thanks for watching. If you got any questions, you can leave them under the video. And I'll put a link to the CP antenna under the video as well as a link to the video transmitter. Although I doubt you'll probably want to go through all this trouble just to find out it doesn't work any better. But there you go. We'll see you later.